I've been thinking about my ideas for building a liquid-fueled rocket again, and I think I may try to build one finally. I'll probably run it off of compressed air and gasoline at the, fir at the first test, because compressed air will be a little bit less combustible, so it wouldn't be as dangerous as pure oxygen. I believe this would be a nice com uh, combustion chamber. And I picked this up. I've been wanting one of these for a very long time. It's a real mower. Not real as, as in authentic, but real as in it uses a reel to cut. It cost me $30. It's missing the back wheels, so it is a bit difficult to push it around. Because the back tends to dig into the ground. But I think this would be a wonderful project. I'll restore it. But also I will add a 12 volt lead acid battery and a little motor to it to help it go. I don't see any like name brands or anything. And unfortunately, real mowers just have not changed much in the past like 70 years. So I really have no idea when this is from. I guess maybe the 70s or 60s. My uncle saved these from work, from his work. They had, like, inks and stuff in them. These would be nice containers. I'll probably wash them out and put water in them. Maybe I can rig up a thing so I can have water coming off the... have the water come out of the gutters and fill that. That way I can, whenever I want to use, do electrolysis, I don't, I don't waste the good water that's been processed. I just w waste rainwater. What are you up to? There's like a weird like rubbery plastic just encasing the back of this, so I don't know, maybe they, maybe whoever had this first tried to sh put that on the axle or something, I don't know, but I had to chisel that off. It might have just been like newspaper that's like stuck onto it, because this looks like it's been in a shed for a decade or so. But there should be an axle that goes through the this hole and this hole with... I'm not sure if maybe I, if it should have a wheel in the back here or or a wheel on the outside, but oh well. I'll probably get some threaded rod and put it through there, and get a couple nuts and bolts. All right, get a couple nuts, and then I'll get like two roller skate or uh, skateboard wheels and just put two skateboard wheels on there. That'd be good enough to keep the back from digging in. The other day, I accidentally dropped a skid whenever I was building my little shed. I dropped a skid onto my battery, on my main welding batteries, and cracked it. It pushed this positive terminal in there pretty far. I was about down to like there or so. So I hit it with a hammer and it, and, and it bent it back up. But I'm still not so sure how, how much of an effect smashing the battery had on the battery itself. It doesn't seem to hurt it too much though. Which I'm glad, because this is a pretty nice battery. It might be a bit old, but it still has a lot of power compared to my other ones. Well, I've had a day to think about this, and I think it might be better, instead of using the skateboard wheels or rollerblade wheels or whatever, those are probably just cut into the ground, it might be better to make like a roller that goes across there. Now, I have a, a roller from an old printing press that would fit that perfectly, but I don't, ha I don't know where that is. I might, might be able to find it, though. If I can't find it, I can cut this piece of pipe so it'd fit there and I'd put some big washers on each side that way that way there'd be a tiny hole in the middle of this and I could put a pin through there maybe have like a big piece of water on here then have like a cotter pin on this side 
and that way I'd have a roller on the back so it wouldn't be put it wouldn't be digging in to the ground. I think that'd be pretty good. It annoys me how a couple times I've heard like archaeologists and stuff say in documentaries that well you can't actually go in your backyard and find fossils. Well of course you can. You can go in your backyard and find a lot of things. Most rocks have fossils in them and some have even really awesome fossils in them. Like I'd say this entire rock is comprised almost entirely of fossils. So I've been thinking about maybe making a video series where I just go fossil hunting. That'd be kind of cool. Probably like a mixture of bottle bottle hunting and fossil hunting. Finding old man-made stuff and old fossils. Which I think I feel like doing that right now. Let's go see if we can find anything interesting in the creek. Okie dokie, let's look for some fossils. Surprisingly enough, there doesn't seem that to be that many uh, mosquitoes down here. There are a little bit though. I might have put, I might might want to put on some bug spray before I came down here, but oh well. Well, I didn't find any good fossils, but I did find this pretty interesting rock. Looks pretty cool. Like, it looks like it might have like a, a little bit of iron content inside of it. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Small fissures in that rock. Yeah, look at that. that that's all poison oak vines there. And that would give me one fucking bad day. Month, actually. Really bad month. Well, there wasn't hardly anything down there. A couple of cool bones and skeletons and stuff, but let's look a little bit, a little bit th further down. This is a pretty small creek, though. Whoa! Fucking big spider web. Yeah, there's poison oak all over here. Damn it. Look right there. I'll definitely have to wash my legs off whenever I get home. Spray my sandals down with the garden hose. But that's actually a very good way to to build up an immunity to it. That's how I've gotten kind of kind of immune to poison oak. Well, down here we have a good example of a sedimentary rock. Look at that. It's just rocks and stuff that have formed together. These are great places to find fossils. And this looks like it's... Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Igneous? But anyway, it looks like it's... This used to be lava. And it cooled. Because it looks like there's like crystals. Or at least crystalline structures in, in the black and white. Oh, here, look at this. It's, it's really hard clay. Clay is also a very good place to find fossils. It just feels good just to stand in this. I wouldn't say it's a hot day. We've been really lucky. This entire summer has been really not like it hasn't been hardly as hot as it used to be, or as it has been several for several years. But it still is a bit toasty today. I'm not complaining though, because I'm not dying from heat stroke again. <laughs> Weird. Look at the border butterflies. Hmm. 
or dragonflies actually, I don't know. Now we're getting into some older, how should I say, strata. There's an old pot. Interesting. Oh, interesting rock in there. Oh, there's the there's some fossilized stuff in the clay, like fossilized tree trunks. And we're out. Ooh. Lots of rocks over there. Actually, I set down the camera for a bit and started coming back here and working on clearing this out by hand. And I think I'm doing a pretty good job. I got this whole area all cleaned out. It's about six feet or two meters of area cleaned out. Made a lot of grasshoppers and stuff angry, but oh well. Well, Oh, it's been not like 20 minutes or so cleaning it, and I got it all done. And I've killed like, I'd say like 50 or so mosquitoes. And the mosquitoes just aren't bothering me anymore. So it's pretty cool. Maybe I killed a lot of the ones around here. That's much easier. And much nicer, too. It's so interesting because it, it feels like you're far away, but then you hear the train, and it, it, it reminds you that we're actually pretty close to civilization. This is a kind of cool spot right here. If you just look up, well, let's go look for fossils again. Sedimentary rock. Oh, now look at that. That's a really nice little fossil there. So I got out my tripod and I attached the little wooden like thing I made for it a long time ago to hold my Motorola Zoom. This wooden thing is just bolted onto the tripod and the Zoom just kind of lays onto it. Then the Zoom is pointing down the scope of the microscope and I have this wooden uh, this cardboard spacer I made which keeps the camera the proper distance away so it, it so it focuses okay and then I have it focusing down on the specimen. And I can record with my Motorola Zoom. Or I can, I can take a picture in this mode. Or take video. So as you can see, this is like a piece of vertebrae or something. It's fossilizing to the rock. It's, it starts up there where there's like a very... You, you can definitely see a rectangular shape there. And there's like yellowish area on the inside, that's like the core of the vertebrae, or bone. I'm not really sure. I think it's something from an animal, though. I'll just move it around a little bit so we can see other stuff. Now, of course, these fossils are remnants of bones and stuff that have been in there. The bones have rotted away, or whatever they are, have rotted away and have been filled with like a quartz crystalline type material. Well, there's a little bit better view of the fossils. This one looks like it's a ring, where the or the the center, like axial, uh, 
point of the c cylinder will go that way. And this one looks like it's sticking out like that. And that one looks like it's sticking out, mm, let's say like that. Mm, that one has a lot of crystals in it, this one right here. Oh, another one with a lot of crystals in it. So now that one thing I want to show is that these fossils go all the way through this rock. Or at least, I assume they do. So let's break it. That's pretty interesting. It seems like maybe it's like a, just a solid, like crystal on the inside and maybe the following fossils are on the outside oh wait no there's a little fossil right there and uh oh yeah yeah i broke it down the middle of a little fossil so when i when we take these two and put them back together that little fossil m meets back up i wasn't expecting it to look all crystally on the inside. I was expecting it to be a little bit white. So maybe these fossils formed and this entire rock was like crystally, but then when it broke, it looked it looked just like the inside, but the outside got contaminated with minerals and stuff and so it discolored. That's one theory. Whoa, watch out. Oops. I think I remember where I put the roller. Yes, I do. That's awesome. That'll be perfect. I remember, uh, am I? I remember it being next to a TV and a, my radio. I just couldn't remember where I put the radio. Yeah. This is our storage shed, by the way. As if we didn't have enough junk already. Well, look at that. I found the roller I was looking for. My dad brought this home from work, like, when I was nine or something and I have kept it all this time this is on the printing press that he ran I just put this pin through here bent it on this side and cut it with a pair of bolt cutters and hammer this part down I can always fix that I can always take it off later easily but that should keep the back off the ground a little bit so it doesn't catch and stuff I kind of like it because this, this is kind of in your face to all the idiots that, that tell me to throw away all my junk. It's like, I had the exact part I needed. Okie dokie, let's go. Wonderful, look at that. Of course, it's not perfect. I still need to... And it's not, not all the blades are really touching. But oh well. I can fix that. Well, I think that's it for this video. I need to start working on my thriller again. Gonna try to get it running this time. Well, hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. See ya.